back. We are here. We are good to go, I believe. Let me have a look. These guys are already in the game. We didn't get time. So after actually having us slightly delayed, they've started with ours. So that's always nice to see. <laughs> um, so Blackout's opened up with the Rogue and Kallax has led with the Warlock. And that's interesting because Blackout will want to make sure that he gets... Well, it doesn't really matter. He, wants, he just wants to make sure that everything plays against Paladin and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. And let me just get... Just sort this out. We just have to sort spectate out. Sorry, guys. Just one second. Right, we're good to go. So, Blackout has started with his Rogue versus the Warlock, and Kallax appears to have a Maligos lock, since we can actually see Maligos in his hand, so that's always nice. Um, kind of rough. How do you think this matchup actually goes, for Rogue versus Maligos, Clorinda? Um, I think the Rogue is okay. It has to make sure it doesn't sort of hang about, but they'll, they'll probably know what each other's decks are. I, I know Blackout definitely played Rogue yesterday. I assume Kallax didn't get Warlock banned twice in a row, but it is possible that Blackout doesn't know what it is. Um, I also have problems I can't see Kallax's hand, but I can see Blackout's hand, so... Okay, so Kallax's hand is actually a uh, Twilight Guardian. He's just played the Peddler and picked up the Flame Imp from that. Uh, he's got Maligos, a Dark Bomb, and a Heal Bot. So we can see that Blackout's gone into the uh, Coin SI7 Agent to do the easy clear-up. But, uh, you know, like, Kallax has the answer now with the Flame Imp from the uh, from the Dark Peddler and then a Dark Bomb to clear up the uh, the SI7 agent there. So, pretty, you know, pretty even on both sides so far. Uh, Blackout's now going to quickly answer with a back sub and they're now a uh, Farseer. So, pretty pretty funny the sort of back and forth that's going on this early in the game. Yeah, the Rogue's definitely going to have to get to the board here to have any chance at all. Um, just to point out, I can now see the other hand, but not Blackout's. Anyway... That aside, in case you're wondering why I'm suddenly like pausing a bit. Um, so, Kallax's hand is okay for now, but it will start getting clunky. He's going to have to start tapping to, to make something happen with his hand. Interesting to see the Kezan Mystic in there as well. Yeah, uh, I, think in, um, I think in tournament format, having a Kezan in a deck that you sort of, you know, like have maybe a few more free slots um, is pretty okay, because you're expecting probably a lot of mage... Um, uh, a lot of uh, Paladin as well, and even though Keza Mystic doesn't actually just straight up deal with Secret Paladin, there isn't really anything that does, but it's just like, you know, for when they draw the secrets early, play them to steal it and drop a 4-3 on the board's pretty nice, but not going to do too much work in this matchup, it's going to just be a 4-3 for 4, um, but on Blackout side now, he has a, he's just going to play his own tw uh, Azure Drake, sorry, and um, it looks like, yeah, he's yeah. going to trade, you can't really afford he's to He's going to want this out of the way, because he's not going to want to run into a Keza Mystic against um, Freeze Mage. Yeah, uh, so... That, that could be a problem for him. This deck looks like it'd be pretty powerful against Freeze Mage, so... With the Maligos finisher as well. Yeah, Blackout's um, so getting Blackout's just is... slightly ahead now, because he's, uh, you know, the, these guys are playing full board control at the moment, but Blackout's managed to, uh, you know, keep a Drake and a 1-1 one -one on the board from that Twilight, uh, Violet Teacher, sorry. And following up with the Lotheb as well, although the the Corrupter does trade with the Lotheb, he still has his uh, Twilight Drake, so... Twilight Drake, as your Drake. I don't know why I'm getting all the card names wrong today. I apologise about that, guys. I will improve. <laughs> it was the slow builder. We're there now, yeah. though. Um, so Blackout's going to try and make this weapon like bigger and bigger, and then just try and finish it off in two hits, like hitting a blade flowy from now onwards. Obviously, that's going to involve him actually drawing some of the stuff to make his weapon bigger. But he's going to he'll concentrate on trying to get that built up over the, the coming turns to try and finish it all in one go, while simultaneously, obviously, keeping the board for now. And Obviously, when you're playing against somebody who's giving you an onslaught like this as a, a warlock, you want the time to tap, but you've got to somehow make that time because otherwise you are taking too much damage, even with a heal bot in hand. Yeah, this is looking pretty okay for Blackout, to be honest. He has even more cycle from his Yard Drake, and the, good, the thing both of these decks are good at, at doing a lot of burst damage late game. Mm -hmm. But between that, you play for the board quite heavily. Because we've seen a lot of Maligos Warlocks that actually don't win with Maligos. They just win by having massive minions on the board that the opponent can't deal with. But then on the other side of that, Rogue is pretty effective at dealing with their minions like that in terms of, you know, the saps, the eviscerates, the big blade flurries, uh, so on. So, um, you know, they're doing pretty well with that. And the heal bot 
isn't a big minion whatsoever, and it will be pretty easily dealt with uh, this turn. We could see a fan for three for the second time in two days from Blackout. <laughs> oh, even as the yeah. SI, maybe the S. What do you like here, actually? Is is Fan of Knives going to get more value later, or do you think he doesn't want to overcommit the board with the SI? It may be that he, yeah, he's gone for the SI. I, I was thinking he may have considered going for the fan just to cycle into something that's going to damage, but the SI is putting enough on the board that he's comfortable with it by the look of it, so. And he, he'll probably know, like I said, we don't know for sure that he knows what he's up against, but he probably does. And he'll want to get this over with you know, as quickly as possible. Yeah, there's a Twilight Guardian gone down, and we don't actually see a sap in Blackout's hand yet. But an Eviscerate for six does a pretty fine job, I think. And especially because he can sprint on top of this. It, I was just going to say, if he gets prep, this is turning into a, a pretty reasonable hand from the, uh, from the Rogue here. Yeah, very much so. Um, He's got a prep fan, right? Yeah. Oh, coin into Van Cleef. Are we going to see this commitment? <laughs> no, boo. Uh, yeah, he'll, <laughs> the, he'll know. The clay was too nice. Lying around yeah. here, surely. Yeah, well, well, the big possibility of it, at least. Yeah, the clay was too nice there. Uh, well, the clay whilst guarding the uh, the Azure Drakes was too nice, should I say? But again, the the stacking spell power is doing some work, just like we saw from yesterday from Blackout as well. Yeah, and Kalak is going to have to work out here how he wants to proceed because he's run out of healing and everything he's got that does anything sort of hurts himself. And he he must know now that this is pretty much an all-in play to yeah. just try and grab the board. Even the oil as well, so that you know he could have just coined oil and that would have been fine. So. Blackout taking a pretty convincing win there with the Rogue and a, a pretty I think it was a pretty decent matchup for Blackout there. I don't think um because Malagos uh Warlock normally takes quite a while to actually uh get going. Um and Rogue, like I said earlier, has the ability to say like, you know, saps and eviscerate a lot of the minions early on. Um yeah. if you can let the rogue draw a lot of cards, well they get going in the late game as well. And uh we just saw then a pretty uh Pretty swift display of that, and Blackout's now locked in his patron, which is interesting because it's lined up against this Maligos Warlock again. Yeah, and this is a matchup that, I mean, basically Warlock does well against Warrior as a rule of thumb on both sides just because of um, the, the card draw and the fact that it can control the board and, and Warrior can't catch up, but there are hands you can get here as Warrior that, that stop that from happening. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think a lot of it just relies on not, like, so if you commit to patrons, then you put the patrons on the board and hopefully that's it. Then they mm -hmm. AOE it down and then use other threats like the Froth and Berserker we can see in the Boom and the uh, Gromash to actually finish the game. But it is really difficult. Um, Kalax has just dropped his Peddler on two for the second game in a row. And now he has a choice of Young Priestess, Soulfire, and Power of Alarming. I wouldn't even mind Soulfire here as an, as like another yeah. card that just kills a patron if he doesn't draw the AOE. Because he's got Dark Bomb for one, Soulfire for another. If you can get rid of two patrons, you can often leave it the other guy with like a much easier to deal with. Yeah, like, like a three two one. and the a five a three one, one and you're not yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but obviously this deck does come in other as you in other ways. It's not just the patrons anymore. As you can see, Blackout's hand is a perfectly decent mid range deck hand. It, with nothing to do with patrons going on. Um, they're just an extra thing that help you build up the board and so on. Um, Kalax has got a, a like a, a so many options here that he wants to make sure he gets this right. He can do, he can proceed in so many different ways, which is of course the strength of these warlock decks, whether it's Maligos, whether it's Handlock. Yeah, it's kind of so a tough on. one as well because part of you now that you've got the Hellfire, Kalax could be thinking, well, I can use this Dark Bomb, right, uh, and that's fine. Maybe <laughs> though, because if he uses Dark Bomb, his follow up's pretty bad. But maybe he might actually want to just soul fire, and then uh, coin out the imp gang boss because he know he's got two. So worst case yeah, scenario, so if, if one gets thrown, you can play another the problem. one. Huh? Is if a coin gets thrown, it slows him. Right well, you down. can coin first, right? Then you just tap. So you coin, you soul fire, then you. That makes sense yeah. to me. Wow, now he definitely will. Ooh. What are we gonna lose? Uh, so you won't be too disappointed about that. It, it's not relevant for a turn or two, so he should be able to fill that gap by then. Next turn looks like Twilight Drake to me. Just develop a huge, difficult to deal with four power guy. Oh, and he does have uh, just drawn into Twilight Guardian. The problem now, though, if he plays one of these dragons, 
um, then he's running low on dragons to actually buff other minions. He did just throw a Corruptor, to be fair, so, you know, there's one less. And we don't see a lot of Malios locks uh, playing the Blackwing Technicians uh, recently either, so there is limited cards left that uh, require that dragon buff, and we do see the Guardian come out now. Yeah, he's preventing the free kill on the 2 2, which makes sense, of course. Um, <clears throat> doesn't feel the need to have a giant Twilight Drake just yet. I'm sure he'll come down sooner rather than later, though. As it's pretty good at eating patrons one at a time if there's no execute, which we can see there is, but there isn't a patron anyway. So, yeah, this seems to be going pretty well for Kalex actually because he still has yeah. a lot of uh, a, quite a large hand actually. Um, and if we like look at Blackout's hand, then yeah, you know, Boom's good, Grom's good, but Maligos, in terms of what Blackout thinks, will probably have some answers to this. Like a lot of the decks run double BGH, for example. Um, yes. in terms of Maligo, so already he's starting to think, okay, my two big guys are just going to insta-die, or at least one of them will, um, and then I've not even drawn patrons yet, the Frothing Berserker's been dealt with, and now he's just dropping a Frothing Berserker uh, on a board that can kill it, like, straight Yeah, we, we saw this from Blackout yesterday, where he does try and bait out the removal, bait out, you know, um, ways to deal with things, and, and try to protect his, his win conditions. And obviously that is a sensible way to proceed. Um, like you say, you can just this this berserker is just dead on board, but it gives Blackout time to draw. You know, next time he can play the boom, which will give him time to draw one or two more cards, and then he'll be hoping to draw into something to set up some sort of Grom win. Yeah, um, really it's interesting. Good for him currently. Yeah, really interesting as well that like um, he could have ran both the minions in and then just played two in gang boss, um, which would have been fine. I suppose he doesn't want to generate too many 1-1s one because then it's susceptible to either Whirlwind or Patrons themselves yep. uh, but just kind of <clears throat> it, it's interesting how, how heavy Kallax is tapping here, he's literally like tapping and you know making a much lower mana play um, which which you know is working and it's how you play a deck like this but I just think he's going very very hard on it and I don't know if that might, uh, might, might yeah. push him a little bit too low because the problem is Although there's, you know, he's got an answer for patrons. That answer for the patrons, they're gonna do three damage to him. And Grom in a rage, he's twelve. All right, so you know, he's, yeah. he's yeah, Grom in a rage already does half his health that he's got left. He does have a heal bot, but he's not gonna play heal bot on twenty four, right? Yeah, you wouldn't think so. You'd think you. Well, he's not gonna play the Azure Drake, but he would have played it. So, um, interesting that he is just trying to keep the pressure on face rather than going on the defensive he's actually trying to go aggressive and he won't be happy with this because he'll be expecting whirlwinds and stuff but yeah but then again blackout won't be happy with those boom exactly. bots exactly doing exactly. absolutely well not nothing but what may as well be nothing in comparison to what they could have done mm -hmm. this whirlwind's um, really get the cards out of this now yes yeah because the, the battle rage is super important because looking at blackout's still got 19 cards left in his deck and we're on turn eight and this isn't good that, you know, you can't draw fast enough. And now he's drawing to some pretty key cards. Slam's going to be nice to continue to cycle. But Death Spite is, like, the card. In, you know, in, in almost, yeah. like, it, well, the card in Patron Warrior for a start. And he's going to even raise him. He's setting up lethal here. So, um, the Battle Rage is really crucial. It's always crucial. It's so crucial against Warlock. Or you, as we've seen, Kallax tapping every single turn just puts him so far ahead on cards. Um, but now he's going to have to actually work out what to do. He'll he'll know that Grom is a massive issue here. So he we may see the heal bot, but that's a little bit scared. Uh, maybe we see the Twilight Guardian come down just to defend the board after probably a Hellfire clear. Yeah, I think that seems okay. Um, the issue with the heal bot is, although you are afraid, that's a lot of your turn five mana yeah, on eight. Is. That's it. That is like a lot. He can't really do anything else. So, I mean, he could like heal bot, soul fire the boom, run, you know, run some minions in, but that just doesn't feel great, and you're not really doing anything. So, I think he's going to go for the he's hellfire. Making is that he he's got to give so much armor up to do it, um, and that that'll be why he spent so long. I think he was looking for an alternative because he didn't want to give all his armor. But this this is a play we saw, and it looks sensible. Uh, now he's going to have to try and build the board, though, because being on 14, even with a heal bot, um, after Blackout has already done this battle rage, is going to be really awkward for him now. And Blackout's managed to hold in there well to set up, you know, hang in there to get the battle rage going. 
Yeah, it's something that uh, one of the differences with Malagos is that it doesn't really, other than the Guardians, doesn't normally run too. It's not too taunt heavy and doesn't run the um, the molten giants obviously like a, say like a Hanlock variant does. So what well, if you can get them low and pressure them hard enough, they don't really have like an easy out. I mean, look at this turn. Yeah, you've healed up to 20, yeah. but there's a lot of damage available <laughs> to black out, and he's con going to continue to heap on the pressure. And even yeah, it's the hard um, to see how the um, Kallax can turn this around now. Um, maybe a Maligos, but Blackout's not low enough for Maligos to be a problem. So... Yeah, and he's not seen Emperor, so he just doesn't care. Like, you know, Maligos is only a massive problem once you've seen Emperor come down and you're like, right, he could soul fire Dark on me, and that's a yes. lot of damage. You know, like, th there are things you can do like that, but without seeing the Emperor, he's got to be feeling pretty safe. And again, he's just putting more and more pressure, and now double in a rage. If... Blackout doing what he did yesterday as well. Yeah, taking, yeah, doubling the rage is enough. Um, taking his time there, he could have done the Grom, put his opponent to two or whatever to stop him from tapping. Um, but instead he's chosen to just make sure that he draws more cards, stays ahead. He knows he's going to win this and nothing bad's going to happen if he plays sensibly. Whereas what if he went, you... put his opponent to two, something bad might go wrong. Yeah, what do you actually think of Fiery War Axe playing the Pirate and the Belcher and just going face? Yeah, that seems because because you've that's just seen good. the second heal bot. What you know? What what is he gonna have? Maybe, yeah, I suppose that he can have um, Belchers himself, but you're representing so much damage. He, oh, okay, he does actually kill off the um, the the heal bot there, which you know is okay. It's just I kind of liked. You know what? I'm gonna kill you next turn. And then there's not a lot you know your opponent can do about it once you've seen the two heal bots. Yeah, I think he's got 26 damage. Casters never do real math, so that might be not quite right but it's near enough he's got something like 26 damage next turn so Kallax has a whole lot of stuff to deal with here and and he might he might have to play as if Grom's not in hand because if you keep playing not to lose you end up not winning yeah well it's um, not even the Grom that's mega scary it's the fact that you just don't ever really play around Grom in a rage in a rage because that is so much damage <laughs> from, from just from nothing. Yeah. And you still have two mana spare. So if he didn't have a Fiery War Axe equipped, you know, like you could equip Fiery War Axe or maybe he plays Taskmaster and that's even more damage. You know, like it's so crazy how much like potential the inner rages give to uh, give to the Grom as extra burst. Yeah, and he's he's going for the um the the only realistic option, like you say, just to clear this board up and he he won't be happy about having to do all that but he has managed to manipulate it so he gets his emperor down which at least at least it's threatening some sort of maligos thing but he's got to not die for a long time yet yeah i think um because of what blackout's seen what what has he seen he's seen a dark bomb and he's seen a soul fire from the peddler so i think mm -hmm. actually just death spite uh, what, what's the best play here? Maybe Death Bite, Face, and then Inner Rage, Execute, Thorison, if, you, if you're bothered on your, and if you're afraid. Uh, and then that actually sets up with the other Inner Rage and the second Death Bite hit um, for Lethal next turn. And again, yeah. you know, like, not seeing any taunts, and it depends how afraid Blackout is. So he has gone for the weapon attack, taking five, and he wants to uh, actually create some patrons. Oh, he's seen both Hellfires, right? Yeah, 19 is a pretty safe number because double four is 18 with Maligos. So, yeah, anything more than that. So, Soulfire and Dark Bomb, for instance, if they were reduced, um, isn't going to be enough. So, I think he's okay on 19. Well, he'll think he's okay on 19. We can see he's okay on as many as he wants. But <laughs> um... So this is just awkward because again one of the issues as well is the second you start saying right you know dart bomb that's two dart bombs gone the soul fires in hand but then like how do you ever kill the, the patron warrior because now blackout can uh, pretty much do what he wants because he knows uh he knows that like, there's all the burst gone and the ghoul's only going to help because that's just going to delay even more and it unless a silence comes out of nowhere then that's actually soaking up some extra damage He's not even playing the Acolyte. That's interesting. Is he, yeah. is he low on... Oh, he's on two cards, so he doesn't want to take any fatigue. These guys taking this match all the way here. <laughs> They're actually just burning out everything they have. But again, Grom in a rage and a... There's no actual out here, right? There's my I'm actually. I'm, I'm just looking at the stream now, and I'm actually bugged. I'm actually like two turns behind. 
Oh. Okay, he's like stopped on my screen. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Go on. Well, I you, up to, you when just... I stopped talking, I was up to date, but I'm not anymore. So you carry on. Yeah, you just get back into the game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, at this point, uh, I'm pretty sure there's no out as Blackout has. Uh, what does he have? He has 16 from hand, and there's no heal in Kalex's hand, and no taunts. He's just drawn into Maligos, but that's not going to do much good when you're on 5 mana. So, um, this is looking pretty rough, and it looks like Blackout is going to move up to 2 nil in this series. Bit of an unexpected one of Patron Warrior Air taking down the yeah. Maligos Warlock, which on paper you just you just wouldn't expect. But, you know, this is Hearthstone and uh, these sort of things can happen. So, there we go. And uh, that's going to be 2-0 to Blackout so far. Um, Blackout now has his mage he has left because he had his mage. Druid banned. He played... Did he play Freeze Mage or Tempo? I can't. We, we cast like so many different Mage games yesterday. He played Freeze Mage. Um, he's playing literally everything that just ruins Paladins, and Kalax is going to have a problem if he wants to get through this match. Yeah. And he's going to have to. He's going to have to run a gauntlet of things that can kill Paladin on top of winning the other games anyway. And I am back now. So that's yeah. Good. <laughs> um, so he's going to run this Warlock in another time. Yeah, and, and at this point, he's Kalax has probably took the attitude of I may as well. Uh, hmm, you know, like, why not at this point? Uh, and this is an interesting matchup, the uh, Maligos versus Freeze Mage, because I kind of feel that unless the Maligos lot pressures very, very hard with minions early on, then the Freeze Mage is favoured, because although there are two healing bots in the Maligos deck, the I feel like the Freeze Mage just gets the combination of cards to finish mm -hmm. off his opponent quicker than the Malilok does. Because li life tap is an issue, right? We've, we've seen that Kezan in the Kallax deck, so That's that true. could be a thing that um, Blackout needs to play around and be aware of. So, did he play it in the end, in the last game? Did Blackout see it? I, obviously, I bugged out, I didn't see the very end, but if he's uh, he seen it. I the, think the he held theme, it, actually. I think he held it. Yeah, that's a, that's a wise hold, right? You, if it's not being seen by other players, you don't want Blackout to know that's there. It's one of your ways you can win this game. Yeah, and I think that. Um, Although the Kezin is big, obviously, like, a massive impact on any matchup against Freeze Mage when, you, when you're when rocking a uh, Kezin. But the thing is, he has to have the Kezin, and he has to be in the position to actually use it. And, you know, like, and then win the game that turn, probably. So it's still going to be an uphill battle. Double mm -hmm. in Gang Boss already, though, is the way he need, needs to go. These minions um, are very sticky. They don't really, uh, you know, get off the board too easily. So that's always a bonus for Kallax here. Following and he does have the owl ready for the well. Doomsayer as well. So Blackout having that Doomsayer Nova combo coming shortly, but um, there is there is the owl to just silence the Doomsayer and keep the board alive. Yeah, although this, this is kind of okay. Blackout a lot of time, but yeah, this is kind of okay though because the owl comes down uh, and then Blackout has the opportunity if he wants to actually just coin out Flame Strike and uh, and clear the board of. At the moment, everything that's going to be there, it does look like it's going to be Twilight Drake Owl. If he's hovering yeah. over the Twilight Drake, I'm pretty confident he wants to uh, silence <laughs> that Doomsay there. That'll be a slight misplay if you're like, oh yeah, Doomsay kills everything. <laughs> yeah, I just remembered what that card does. Um, yeah, so massive board here. Hmm. Blackout having the cone and the flame strike in hand though. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of uh, deciding whether just Thorison's okay. Because he has to, it would negate, yep. it would reduce two fireballs, an ice block, and Alexstrasza. So you know a lot of you know pretty impactful cards there in terms of how to actually end the game. But he is playing with the mindset of my opponent is running two heal bots, and it's not like he has frostbolt, ice lance, ice lance as well. If he had the frostbolt and the ice lances, maybe he would have emperored and go. You know what? I can actually yeah. just burst through and finish this game quick. But he doesn't. He can reduce so... on seven and play the Alexstrasza on eight, so it still doesn't really affect the curve he's trying to make either by playing the Thoros on a turn later. Because if you get one reduction, you don't you don't ever expect to get the second reduction, whatever. And so, playing it on turn seven, having already you know, it's got rid of quite a bit of the recurring damage, is probably a better way to go about it, I think. Yeah, and Kalax's Dark um, Peddler actually just didn't really give him anything good. I mean, I guess the uh, the plus one from the Priestess is okay um, in terms of cards like Blizzard, but. Mm -hmm. In general, he was probably, in, in all honesty, looking for a power overwhelm in there to push for extra. And there's one torch gone, so Blackout's done the three damage removal and puts a three mana fireball into his deck, which is definitely pretty reasonable for the burst. Yeah, especially in Freeze Mage, where you go deep into your deck. Um, 
a lot of the time. And he, I mean, a three mana five, he's going to have two more of those soon anyway. So, just he's probably, like you said, he's just waiting for something in the freeze area before he actually plays his Thor's and then. But he, he'll probably have to play it soon just for the minion on board as well. But he's a very good freeze mage player. And he's quite happy to just take his time. As we saw with the patron, just taking his time to make sure he does things uh, methodically. As much as Blackout ever takes his time, that is. Yeah, um, this is pretty nice though. I mean, he, he still has the second. Have we seen an ice barrier yet? We've not. Um, we saw right? both of us very early on, didn't we? Both ice barriers yeah. have been procced? I uh, know, just one, one ice barrier is really oh, early. Right, right, He's right. Got one more left. Right, okay. I was going to say, we've not seen both, right? But, like, getting yeah. the ice barrier, you know, like, this is a nice turn. I mean, look at the cards. Um, he could probably do with them um, drawing a little bit more burst. <laughs> Um, but imagine if he draws into that uh, that torch now, the Roaring Torch. Like, so that is filthy. Can the Kallax can proc here if he wants to, can't he? And risk. I think he has to use either Triple Dark Bomb or... Mm. Sorry, do, yeah, Double yeah, to Dark Bomb and a Soul Fire, yeah. or you know what I mean. And... The problem, the problem Don't there with procking um, is that you pretty much, you leave the Emperor up and yeah. your opponent can just heal, right? You know that yeah, if if you'd seen Alex, lose yeah, if, if you'd seen Alex Straza, then that's reasonable because you're like, right, the odds on him actually healing back up enough for it to be a problem are pretty low. Um, but because he's not seen that, he is just going to build the board up. He has seen a flame strike, so dropping two five fours or having two five fours on the board, pretty reasonable since a lot of freeze mages only run one uh, at the moment. Yep, and just choosing to get the use out of these corruptors and get the 5-4 body on the board because one thing this deck doesn't actually have which is really strange when you face it you think you're getting beaten by massive things is it doesn't really have huge bodies that you can put on the board like traditional handlock can where it just sticks down 8-8s all over the place a 5-4 is about as good as you get in this yeah and you don't run cards like Defender of Argus either so it's not like you can you know buff these up with maybe a Bran or something like that so um yeah, he, Blackout actually drew into card draw, so he pinged his Acolyte and then got the loot hoarder. He probably wanted more key cards, like some extra burst, maybe even his Pyroblast, because you've got to think, like, Alex Straza, Fireball, Fireball, Pyroblast is pretty pretty brutal over the course of three turns. Um, if he can survive it, either that or maybe even a Blizzard, actually, just to, you know, slow him down again. Mm -hmm. He's not yeah, seen he's, any he's, heal He's been lacking yet. his mass removal. With these two Fireballs cluttering up his hand, he's had to play kind of turn to turn. Whoa this game so do we just see Alex Straza now um, we got the block up we Alex Straza can you get through a heal bot as well he would have to do 32 15 he'd have to do 23 oh he threw the dart bomb okay uh, so he can Alex Straza ice block and then just kill him next turn with the three fireballs right yeah, assuming there's no heal bot. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think at this point, you don't have a choice, right? Depending on what he draws, I guess. Oh, yeah, that okay. Helps him a lot, right? yeah. So now he can do it because it makes things so much easier for him. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and this is just all in, and we can see that, I mean, Kallax has to tap, right? You just have there to is tap. a heal bot, though. It's a nightmare for Kallax, right? Uh, for Blackout, but. Well, he still has to tap. And now he has to tap. And he gets the heal bot. <laughs> Okay, um, so what does he do? He heals to 18. Uh, yeah, which is not good enough. No, it's not no, he good heals, enough. He, doesn't, he heals to 21, right? He heals to 21, oh, he can brand. good enough. It's a bit different, yeah. He can brand, yeah, uh, sorry, yeah, he can brand. Oh, this might just be game then, right? Yeah, you take out the Doomsay here so that the Boom Bot has um, a chance to kill as well. I mean, that tap, guys. Like he I goes straight up to full health. Like, casual heal for 16. Alex Straz is gone. And um, Black Hat's going to ping himself. Yep. Yeah. That was insane, actually. Like, the, the having Bran and then tapping into the heal bot to have the exact mana to play both. Absolutely yeah. crazy. So, we're going to see Black Hat's Freeze Mage again. He's probably not too upset because that matchup, you know... A little bit swingy, I guess, but Kallax mm -hmm. has Rogue, and most importantly, I guess, for uh, for Blackout Paladin, which means yes. that, you know, he's got to be feeling pretty fine, just saying, you know what, 
You're going to lock in Rogue, which has happened, as we can see, because yeah, no it's the obvious there. pick. He, you, you always try and put the pressure on your opponent and get more information about their deck by by playing your best ones first and leaving your, your bad matchup, or your worst matchup in this case, until last. Yeah. And when that happens, obviously, you know, if you're 2-0 up, it comes back to 2 all. Even if you know your last match is 70-30 or something, you, you can't help but have that nagging doubt, oh my god, this is going to go wrong, which can affect your play. So it's always right to pressure your opponent that way. Yeah, but you've just got to say that the, the the freeze mage against Paladin is so grim. It's not like it's a given win, but it's one of the uh, the heavier set percentages in matchups, I would say. Yeah, outside of the ridiculous things like Murloc Paladin versus Control Warrior or Control Warrior versus Freeze Mage, it's, it's one of the more awkward ones. But awkward in Hearthstone is only 70 or 75%. It's not like 90. Yeah, I mean, there, there are no. plenty of games where, like, if it if it's Secret Paladin, I don't know what type of Paladin it is, but if it's Secret and he goes something like Secret Keeper, Secret Keeper, some secrets, and suddenly those minions turn into Yetis very quickly, yeah, and the mage doesn't have can't deal your... with the board, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't draw your scientists, you just draw your secrets and a bit of card draw and you know some Frost Novas that don't do anything that you draw into something rubbish. It can happen. But this matchup isn't over yet either, so... Uh, Blackout with a tidy-looking hand. A bit awkward with those two secrets, though. In fact, yeah. this is sort of the hand I was just talking about. Yeah, having where... the two secrets in hand and then... Um... And the Mad Scientist, it's sort of, you know, it's thinning your deck a little bit, but you want an anything but the secrets yeah, at this you point. Don't want those in your hand. And Kallax is just going for it here. Like, here's a 6-6, six, six, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah. Have you got it? Have you got ways to kill it? And at the moment, he hasn't got ways to deal with it. Yeah, and again, the, the moment, like, the Freeze Mage puts a Frostbolt into a 6-6, six, six, but can't actually finish it off, um, is the moment you're feeling pretty damn good about the matchup. There's a Roaring Torch, though, so that's definitely going to help. So Blackout can actually kill Van Cleef over two turns, but that's mm -hmm. such an investment in time and cards. Yeah, the cards as well, because those are your closers. And, I mean, he's okay for now, right? He's got this, so he might choose just to draw two more cards next turn and try and get out of this mess. It means he'll take six more damage, but as long as he feels that the, the, the block's going to remain... And his life is going to be okay. He might just choose to draw cards. But no, he's decided that this thing's just doing too much damage. I'm going to have to invest into it. Well, the thing is, here, he either... I think the drawing cards is okay. But he either Frost Novas... And yeah. plays one of the, the, the burn cards. Like, uh, or, like the Frostbolt. Um, but if he does that, he's not gaining anything, right? Yeah, so well, then no, you may as well Nova. just kill it. Yeah. He, he needs to get... Through, yeah, he needs to just get something that isn't garbage into his hand right now. Something that's connected with killing his opponent. That's a start. There's the Alex Straza, so that's part one of the equation done. Um, but he's going to have a lot of stuff on his hands in a minute. And Lothar there is crucial in this match as well. It just comes down, if you time it right, it comes down and completely messes up the Freeze Mage's plans. Yeah, you pretty much um, are almost by a turn. And the most common thing to do where in any matchup versus Freeze Mage when you, you, you were sitting on the low third is to wait until they play Alex Straza. And then, yes. uh, because that's like one of the few impactful minions in, in the deck, right? So you play yeah. the Alex Straza, and that's like the whole turn. So the next turn, they almost certainly want to play a lot of spells, or at least a couple of spells, because um, the decks are, you know, like lean towards that. So then you play Lotheb, and then they just like have pretty much a dead turn. And a lot of the time, if they Alex Straza, then the follow up is either playing a secret in the form of mm -hmm. uh, maybe Ice Block, but again, that's the whole turn. Or he has to just and do something dead awkward. Turn is the turn they bought themselves with that ice block that they're desperately protecting. And you just go, there's my Lothar. Now your ice block is basically not there anymore. So you need another one. And if you've got another one, like you just said, Raven, it costs you a whole turn again. And then both your ice blocks have been kind of rendered. They're not doing what they're supposed to do, which is buy you time to kill your opponent. Yeah, and we see Kallax now getting the most out of his Azure Drake spell power. Just pushing for an extra five with the um, with the Eviscerate. And he's doing the, the whole... Uh, Okay, I've got. I've had a pretty good start, pretty quick actually. We're only on turn six uh, into seven now. Um, I'm gonna just push, and this is the least amount of cards you have drawn. You know, like it, it, to pressure. So there's still what 17 cards left in Blackout's deck. So you push like this, and kind of just hope the mage doesn't really have all the answers. But double Frost Nova, although was a bit slow early on for Blackout, now especially against Rogue, can pretty much just buy you turns. He can even frost over again this turn. 
and just say, yeah. well, you know, you've played Lothab now, and then after Frostnova, and then the board's just back to how it was, and then he can Blizzard the turn after. And every single time um, he's drawing cards, and, you know, hopefully for, on Blackout side, you know, drawing into more burn so they can do something with Alex Draz and hopefully finish the game. But Kalex is uh, built up quite the board. It's a little bit scary, and Blackout doesn't have a Flame Strike at the moment. He doesn't, but he's got threes that keep things going for some time to come. Um, his next turn is going to be really like clunky. It's just going to be an eight mana, for, yeah, eight mana frost nova. But then he's got Blizzard to keep things going a bit longer. With nine mana, he can draw cards off that turn as well. And then he probably is going to be set to, to Alex Straza into either winning or close to winning. But. Kalex has got a lot of mana available. If he does draw into um, damage or sprint, he yeah. has got this double prep that I, he can do a lot of work with. I think Kalex would have loved to have seen a, a sprint, actually. Because um, he's at the point where he can eat, like, he's in a pretty good position to actually take this game. But he, he needs some other cards, like a, a flurry and an oil, for some more sort of guaranteed damage. Because. Any form of freeze, as we can see here, just locks the rogue out of a lot of uh, damage per turn, um, because you know it's very minion based, uh, and he's already seen one of this. So I think he would want to just sprint into some more cards and so you know some more actual burst damage as opposed to just relying on the minions. Yeah, and Blackout's getting to the point where he will soon have the 15 damage he needs to go for this. I mean, he only has six, but he has the ice lance, which combos with the other cards like the other ice lance and the frost bolts. He has card draw. Um, he is down to only 15 cards in his deck, so those cards are going to be forthcoming pretty soon. And in the meantime, he has Blizzard to buy himself a turn to get there. On the Blizzard turn, he can Intellect. It's looking good that he's going to be able to find a way to do this. And there's the, yeah, there's the Fireball. So that threatens so much now. Yeah, and especially because he's... Um... He hasn't seen much of Kalex's deck. I don't know how much information Blackout does have in terms of the heal potential. Uh, some rogues just play Earthen Ring, which we can see is in Kalex's hand. Some rogues take either a heal bot. There are even some lists that take maybe two. Um, but this is a really good setup because the ice block's still there. Um, it still requires 10 damage to proc. And now he has Roaring Torch, Fireball, and the second ice block to buy him another turn, as well as Blizzard. And if he really wants Ice Lance... Um, so he can do a lot this following turn to pressure the rogue and see what see what he comes out with in terms of healing. Yep, and there's three of it, and that's all, all it's going to be, I think. And Blackout just needs to... He's going to get his information first, then he's going to put up the block and... Oh, and there's the, the frostbot. Face. Yeah, and there's the frostbot he needs to win the game. And as far as we're aware... There's not going to be enough healing in the deck, but yeah, and with no card draw, um, we can pretty much guarantee this. That was a the frost bolt was huge there. I mean, he did have Antonidas, so this turn he could have um, oh yeah, he could have actually finished it. So that frost bolt was huge. He could have Blizzard and then Ice Lance face and hope for not lethal <laughs> from the rogue. But there we go, Freeze Mage do, doing its thing and showing why uh, the deck's still around. Yeah, and Blackout's lineup is really terrifying. Like. I was saying that it's looking like a really good lineup because it picks on Paladin so hard. He didn't even face the Paladin, and he's won 3 1. And, you know, he's played those Freeze Mage games and the Warrior game really, really accurately, I believe, there. And they're the more difficult games. Like, just. He's just going to walk over Paladins. And this lineup's pretty good. The other players must be pretty worried in this tournament. Yeah, I think um, this uh, and, and Blackout especially is displaying the, the knowledge of the format as well. Because whenever there's a ban involved, like yes. if, if this was 3-deck, he might well not take Freeze Mage because everyone will take Warrior. Mm -hmm. And Warrior's almost a guaranteed win. You know, like 9 times, 8 times out of 10, I guess. Um, but in a format where you can ban the one like super hard counter and then just have to deal with maybe like Druid, you know, as, yeah. as a problem deck, and that's if other people have brought Warrior, Druid, and then whatever, you know, like it's going to be, it, it just makes Freeze Mage even more powerful. It's so much and better in a ban format than it is in an open. The other thing is, well, if you're going to pick on a card deck, like if he, his deck, to, to me, his lineup picks on Paladin. All four of his decks pick on Paladin. In a format with four decks instead of three, what happens is, you, even if you weren't going to play Paladin in a best-of-five three-deck format, 
you sort of think, oh, I better take the Paladin as my fourth deck in a best of four, because why wouldn't you have Paladin? Well, that, four, it, exactly. It's not like, oh no, I should take Paladin. It's like, no, Paladin's pretty good. And like, whether you, regardless of which one, obviously, Secret Paladin being way more popular mm -hmm. and probably overall better than Murloc Paladin, um, depending on yeah. meta. But even Murloc Paladin's an option. So you do have, like, you know, multiple ways to go with the, with the class, and it's so strong at the moment. Like, as you said, it's kind of difficult not to take when you have four classes you can pick. And again, Blackout's just built his lineup and his playstyle for this tournament in respect of that. But good work In respect from of that, and not to take a Paladin in case anybody else did the same thing. Yeah. So they can't find <laughs> his Paladin. He hasn't got one. He had the, you know, the courage not to take Paladin to this tournament, which is paying off pretty well so far yeah so this is single elimination right or is it double limb this is single elimination he will play the winner of um vortex or talk in the next round which will be the semi-finals and in the bottom half we're going to have synthetic and techno goose and the winner of that will play the winner of spo or orange okay so, so look, looking good then but for now we're just going to go to a break while we get the next game going guys thanks a lot for watching and uh, stick around for the next one